15 years ago, since we're celebrating our 15th uh, anniversary of Angels on Earth, our editor-in-chief, Fulton Ausler, loved angels. He's always been a fan of angels. And he had an idea one day that um, possibly angels was a subject that guideposts could um, tackle and put into a magazine all its own. He knew that had never been done before, and uh, several of us on the staff were excited about the idea. There's a long history of, of angel stories running in Guideposts magazine, and back in the early 70s, Dr. Ralph Harlow wrote a story about hearing angels while he was walking with his wife. And he was a, a professor at Harvard, so that gave him a lot of credibility. And the two of them heard some something that they believed were angels speaking. And at the end of the walk, they realized that each one of them individually and without discussion had believed that he and she were hearing angels. It was a fabulous story, uh, one our readers have loved at Guideposts, and that was the start of the popularity, at least with the Guideposts audience. We put together a really great magazine, a really wonderful premiere issue. We decided to go with an illustration on the cover, and that's something we haven't changed to this day. And we were very proud of what we'd done. And by the time it was all um, printed and it was ready to go out in the mail, we looked at each other and said, oh my goodness, we have to do this again. We're going to have to make another issue, the next issue. And we're going to have to do that six times this year and six times again next year. And, and how are we going to do this? And I felt that we'd found every kind of angel imaginable and that we put each one of those in our premiere issue. It was an issue full of variety. The reader wouldn't say, oh, I bet I'm going to see the angel, you know, on the next page. That's no fun for a reader because these are wonderful stories, miraculous stories, but above all, they should be exciting. And, and we want to engage our readers. And what happened was those issues went out and people got them in their hands. I don't know what percentage of those people said, wait a minute, I have an angel story, and sat down and wrote a story. Our offices were flooded with mail, and not only did we find more angel stories than, than even we imagined, but we found our imaginations were just so pushed out to, to places that we just, um, we never imagined the range of expression and um, of experiences is, is just, I believe, what makes the magazine so strong. So we have so many new things happening um, 15 years after this first little magazine started out. We're, we're growing in leaps and bounds. We have a fabulous website uh, so that you don't have to be without angels every two months. There are new stories, new content on our website every day. You can go and find blogs from me and, and others, Joan Wester Anderson and Sophie Burnham and others, Guidepost editors, um, and we are there every day. You can also find uh, podcasts, uh, Everyday Angels. This summer we went on our first Angels on Earth cruise to the Bahamas. And there are so many things planned. Um, I'm very excited about our first Angels on Earth daily planner for 2011, uh, which we're designing now and is really beautiful. Another way to have angels in your life every single day. With all the new ways to, to reach people, it's very exciting to feel like Angels on Earth is more a part of, of um, more people's everyday lives and that they are more a part of our lives. 